What governance ideals have been promoted, advocated, or strengthened because of these successes or uh, the, the whole myriad of experiences uh, on social media platforms? I think that social media really changes how the industry works. Like the advertising uh -huh. industry, take for example, on tourism. It used to be that for tourism, they would craft ideas in an office and then they would advertise through billboards mm -hmm. that people would be known about it. But now, especially with It's More Fun in the Philippines, right. it's it supposed to be one of the most eff effective or popular. Yeah. It started through Twitter, actually, and oh. people were tweeting, like, beer is cheaper here, hashtag, it's more fun in the Philippines. Uh -huh. look at, just so look they at crowdsourced it. Yeah, and other people <laughs> posted, just look at our beaches, it's more fun in the Philippines. Wow. And so from those ideas, that's what the board, that, that's what offices take into consideration now, and that's when they were able to craft the the billboards that we see along EDSA. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Well, and also interesting because in his um, presentation of the proposed 2015 national government budget, mm -hmm. uh, Secretary Butch mentioned that one of their identified drivers would be tourism. Well, we expected that. Mm -hmm. The good thing is he also said agriculture and manufacturing. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. since they mentioned tourism, maybe you know, citizens in social media would like to engage that. Okay, you got the idea of more fun in the Philippines from us. They're going to spend a lot more on it this next fiscal year. So these are how we think you should develop tourism. Ecotourism, people's tourism, whatever kind of tourism. I think social media also makes it a lot easier to quantify your reach and the message that's being across, especially with Facebook analytics, trending. Google <laughs> analytics. Wow. Yeah, with the what you know, whatever hashtags are trending, it makes it a lot more, a lot easier one to convince others of this idea because you can show them how many people are you know, uh, you know, going with this idea or you know, spreading this around, and so it's easier to convince in that I think in that way um, it gives more weight to to whatever movement that you're trying to do is you can ha you have those numbers to back it up. So it lends it more of the science, more of the rigor of the thing, mm -hmm. and then maybe social media people just have to figure out how do we link the 25% of Pinoys who are interested in this with everybody else through other platforms maybe, including traditional platforms. Yeah, because especially starting with social media because it is so new, trying mm -hmm. to go to higher ups in you know, advertising, um, mm -hmm. in mass media, it's you can use those numbers to back up, you know, what, what is trending. How new is social media, by the way, in the Philippines? How many years have you been oh, on that platform? It's a long time Facebook ago. Long. Friendster, Facebook Friendster. became popular in 2009. 2009. But so before that, there was Multiply. Yeah. 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 Like Ten years. Ten years. Yeah. Okay, well, that's half a generation. 20 years is I a generation. 2000, 2000, yeah. 2000, around 2000, well, I years college, 2004. Ouch. <laughs> <laughs> I graduated yeah. from college before 2004. Graduated <laughs> college. I was, I was thinking more of the friends, because that's like yeah. one of the pioneer. So okay. when we were like 2000, 2000, yeah. 2004, so 14. Um, in terms of, of governance, yeah. um, I think what MMDA is doing with mm -hmm. Twitter mm, is, yes. is brilliant. They're responsive, yeah, huh? Yeah, exactly. And you I think tweet them, they great. reply. Yeah, and, yeah. and that creates such Whoa. a good, like, exactly, when, when you have that idea of, wow, they listen to yeah. me. And so Even the citizen, PNP hotline. Exactly. You, you and they crack jokes. To, yeah, <laughs> about the rose head. And <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's really funny that, yeah. that you just open up your channels and mm -hmm. you create this T totally different attitude yes. and now it will be easier for MMDA to mobilize because they know people will listen to them because they listen to the people mm. so you really create that channel um, just by opening up and and Twitter is free yeah. you don't have to invest in anything maybe one person or three people to man your Twitter account mm -hmm. but you know that, that, that costs a lot less than you know buying a billboard and, right. and buying those electronic billboards with messages that people might not even read because they have to drive. Um, they should exactly. not be looking there. <laughs> exactly. Here, right? So <laughs> I think that's one, um, one good example of transparency in action. Mm. Um, also, I know of initiatives like in Indonesia, huh. in, in frontline government offices, in the, in the window. So here, your government employees are required to wear an ID mm -hmm. so that you know who you're dealing with and right. if you want to ever complain, mm -hmm. you know the name of the person. Uh -huh. Um, but it's so easy for you to cover your name in, with an ID. So in this particular, I think it's in Bandung, in a, uh -huh. a government office in Bandung, they put Twitter handles instead of IDs. Ah, so cool. like instead of you just knowing their name, you know that, oh, I can just tweet this person and say that she did a good job or that she did a bad job. Nice. And, just, and just by the virtue of, of that, of having Twitter accounts for each government employee, 
it already creates so much transparency, mm. and it, it affects the behavior yes. of the, the the government of officer because you're like, oh, I'm being watched. Right. I'm I, I can be held accountable right. now. You know, so people really behave differently once you you know you're being watched. And then again in Indonesia, there's this official I know. Um, he he videotapes all of his meetings and mm -hmm. uploads them on YouTube. Wow. And maybe people wow. don't necessarily watch these videos, but like the thing is, exactly, uh. it's like if you have anything against me, all the meetings I've ever had are uploaded on YouTube. It's watch very it. transparent. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Indeed. So it's and it's free. That's the thing. Mm. Like it's free. It doesn't it doesn't cost much. It's such a simple idea. Mm. It's really at the level of of the interaction with the people. And it's it's real to people. It's it's real. The experience is real. It's it's every day. It's it's not difficult to do, Good and it's free. Wow. So a lot to learn from our neighbors as well. Yeah. I just want to cite like one experience. This is um, a little more concrete based on uh, our experience in Czech my school. It's mm. the government of ARMM. So mm. for the longest time, I mean, people would say, oh, this is this people. I mean, ARMM is like the like. Like name it, cause. name it, name it like mm -hmm. all the most of the negative things that we could say. But like there's a, there's interesting because all of the highest government officials in Depe they are they are all in Facebook. Ah, so if you have like wow. a grievance, you have a so it facilitates the dialogue directly mm -hmm. from to them and then to the citizens. Mm -hmm. Like for example, if um, you have a report, you can just Facebook or like post it then ta uh, at Secretary Kolayan oh. and then he will see oh. your report. So it somehow facilitates faster faster dialogue and faster comment and then say for and then like a few minutes then you will see at uh, the the secretary will reply hi I this is on my attention kindly check at he will tag oh, the wow. principal so the principals oh. or the division superintendents are also in his facebook mm. so say for example you can already have your i mean you don't have an excuse why you don't want to I mean, say anything or like uh, you don't have an excuse why <coughs> he or she can't reply because yes. everyone's there on Facebook. I was actually asking them, is it okay? Is it too informal to like make a dialogue on Facebook? So they said it's okay because um, that's actually their venue. I mean, the culture mm -hmm. itself doesn't actually in, um, encourage face-to-face -face conversation. Oh. So they wanted it's, it's it's saving face. Yes. So the Facebook. So the Facebook itself is a. Uh, is a way for them to speak out mm -hmm. without um, and it's putting public. their face yeah. and it's public. At the same time. It's public, yeah. but it's yeah, public, but you know, people don't really mind. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. They, don't, they don't really like see that. Oh, I'm actually exposing myself. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> this is my paper trail. This is my confession. Yeah. Exactly. So easy dialogue through social media. Yeah, and there's a, another positive development recently in Arm Dep Ed that you mm -hmm. might want to check out, and that check my school might tap into just mm -hmm. to amplify the good effects of, of your interventions. And there's an old congressional uh, investigation into the non-remittance of armed debt ed contributions mm -hmm. of their public school teachers to the GSIS. Mm -hmm. And then, Bayan Rep Mayong Aguha and other members of the House of Reps, they conducted an inquiry into this as in a decade ago. Mm -hmm. And only recently, together with armed governor Hataman uh, Mayong, who's now uh, a member of the board of GSIS, they concluded um, uh, a, a recovery of that fund, mm -hmm. which the teachers had contributed, but the old arm debt had never remitted to GSIS. Then they cleaned out the lists of the ghost employee <laughs> teachers. They really went to communities to validate who's really here, exists, is still alive, is, was teaching at this time. And they have arranged to to uh, let those um, members of GSIS be able to avail of their mm -hmm. uh, their benefits now, pension, etc., okay. loans. Oh. So that's a sector of the ARM uh, educational system that's empowered. They achieved a political victory, but they have and they have economic uh, gains from it as well, social protection. So the teachers who mm -hmm. are one of your natural allies in yeah. you know, a check your, your yeah, school uh, initiative. Yeah, thank you for bringing it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I guess well, for us, we deal a lot with local government, and if you mm -hmm. look at you look at the feedback channels that are mandated by law, for me, I think they're very outdated. Uh -huh. It's like write a letter, and then mm -hmm. by law, we will reply to you in ten to fifteen days. And even for example, um, na iya one. Mm, um, oh my god! People <laughs> always complain about this. Yes. <laughs> and I looked and <laughs> just recently, yeah, yeah I went, sad. I went there, and I said. I, I asked the officer, send your feedback box. You and they had a feedback. Uh -huh. uh, they had a feedback box. There's nothing. And they said, there's no feedback for the Eon? Are you serious? Like, open my news feed. There's somebody complaining about mm -hmm. the airport every day. Mm -hmm. But it's not done through the proper feedback channel. So all this feedback is lost. 
So I think that day I was the only one who ever put feedback there because I, I went to the officer and said, like, "Miss, can I have the feedback form?" And she said, "Huh? Parang nagulat pa siya." You were the first yeah, to ever ask for like, feedback form, and then they all really watched me while I was writing Aww. my feedback. They were so touched. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, "Okay, here's my feedback." I mean, I mean, for me, the the airport is. Like I think I was just saying that uh, the aircon was hot, and then I think yes. your your lining mechanism because they're doing improvements. That's mm, the thing. Yes. You could see that they're already making effort. So mm-hmm. to help them, you know, what are the specific things that you want them to improve on? And right. I think they'll really need your feedback in that. But nobody uses it because who will really you know take time to write down and mm-hmm. put it in a in a suggestion box? Nobody does that. Mm-hmm. So maybe they could use social media. Yeah. To, to you know, classify the feedback to get more specific and concrete and constructive feedback. So mm-hmm. could I support that idea as a suggestion to the group? Mm-hmm. Like you know of the 17 Metro Manila LGU websites. I mean, is it possible that like when like Feel Health when it has its one day per area for signing up for Feel Health membership, could the online community like identify even if batches of government websites and you tell people these are on the social media platforms and they're available for your feedback maybe people don't know that yeah. they're supposed to they can give feedback or they don't know what to give feedback about yeah. but if you tell them that um, they're here they're online and what do you think of their programs these are the programs what do you think of them maybe it'll start a conversation going from the supposed audience but actually participants and not initiated by the by the information providers. You know, just this year, I had a student mm-hmm. who posted an open letter of sorts, I think. It started with her experience. She, she's married to a foreigner. Mm-hmm. They were processing their papers at the immigration office, mm-hmm. and she was treated badly. Mm-hmm. So she actually, I think she PM'd me, I think started with that, and told me about what happened. Mm-hmm. She was so angry, I could sense it. She was an English teacher. Uh, she's not here. I don't think she's in the Philippines now, but she used to teach in one school, and, and she, you could just sense it from her writing. She just was fuming mad. So I advised her, why don't you write? Yes. You rewrite this letter, <laughs> make it less, you know, uh, hard and, and sharp, <laughs> and then send it to the uh, send it to the office, and or I told her. Maybe you could uh, post this on Facebook, mm. and she did, okay. <laughs> and, and uh, it gained a lot of reshares and, and likes, and and something happened with that case. Uh, I don't know what happened with the particular person involved in, in that government office, but uh, her problem was after the pod, and she was very happy about. It. She after the incident, she posted, she PM'd me again and said, "Thank you, sir. It was a really nice learning political experience." So <laughs> you know, these things could really happen. I think people just don't realize how potentially powerful yes. social media can be and and you know I, I don't know how we can really start the ball rolling at the local government level or yeah. the level of the various uh, government agencies and their local you know uh, offices but mm-hmm. that 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 can that can be done that yes. can be done um, I've encountered many offices in government at the local level mm-hmm. or uh, the the local offices of national government agencies which don't which don't deliver very good services but then you know when when i tell them would you like me to write something about you on facebook they say no no need okay what do you want you know <laughs> I, I i don't know but uh, there really is something there that we have to maximize yes. uh, work on